A TV show that may have predicted C-19, animal hybrid babies, and the classic tale of a hero's journey. This is Popcorn Recap, and today we're going to be covering Sweet Tooth. The episode begins with the narration of The Great Crumble. Aditya Singh, a doctor, works tirelessly in the hospital when it's revealed that life will never be the same again. Dr. Aditya notices that a lot of people are getting sicker. The narration goes on to imply that a terrible virus called H5G9 is spreading, which is rather unsettling now. Dr. Aditya continues his routine as a doctor as the chaos slowly grows around him. Meanwhile, a father chooses to go into the forest and abandon the world, while Dr. Aditya remains in the burning world. Dr. Aditya then wakes up one morning and searches for his wife, Rani. Dr. Aditya finds Rani frozen and distraught on the floor. Rani appears to be infected with the virus. With the world in disorder, Dr. Aditya and Rani jump in the car, drive away from their home, and go to the hospital. Dr. Aditya and Rani pass through people running from everywhere. Both of them successfully enter the hospital and stop inside the elevator. After this, the narration continues as it explains that something extraordinary happened when the world slipped into chaos. Meanwhile, a nurse calls Dr. Aditya, asking if he's a doctor. Dr. Aditya follows the nurse through the hallway of the hospital. He gets curious when he sees parents outside the baby ward, and they appear distressed, and some of them are sobbing. As Dr. Aditya gets closer and finally reaches the baby ward, he's blown away as he sees that newborns have taken on animal features. The narration continues as it states that no one knew what came first, the hybrids or the virus. Following this, the father, who escapes the chaos of the world by going deep into the woods, continues to venture as he brings his hybrid son. He finds an abandoned wooden cabin in the middle of the forest. He renovates the place out of the raw materials he could find. He also manages to get water and rebuilds the fences of the place for their safety. After that, the father continues creating a new world in the woods for himself and his infant Gus in order to survive. One night, while Puba is creating a handcrafted book for Gus, Puba hears Gus refer to him as Puba. As a result, the father adopts that name. As Gus slowly matures, Puba gives him handcrafted books. Gus and Puba also have remained in the woods. While Puba is fishing, he reminds Gus of the rules that if Gus hears a growl, he should duck. If Gus hears a voice, he should run. If he sees a human, he should hide. One day, as Puba and Gus are extracting saps from the trees, they hear a jet flying above. Puba covers Gus's ears. As the jet crosses above them, pamphlets go floating down to them. Puba picks one pamphlet that says, There's a safe place for your hybrids that also promises medicine, healthcare, food, water, shelter, and safety. The pamphlet also includes their radio frequency. Eventually, Puba becomes concerned about the outer world intruding on their isolated life in the woods. Gus, who is half human and half deer, is now able to see perfectly. He's also more conscious of the outside world, and he frequently inquires about life outside of the woods with Puba. Puba then describes a self-destructive and selfish society in which nature has made everyone sick, but then the hybrid miracle occurs, which many people fear. Following this, Gus's security continues, and as he gets older, he decides to venture outside of the fence and further into the outside world. Gus takes in the scenery the sounds amplify. Puba finds him, and he's furious. Puba and Gus argue. Gus is adamant that he thought he could hear his mother, but his father tells him that she's gone. Things take a turn for the worst when Puba comes into a man hunting for his sister. Puba is frightened since it's been a long time since he's seen a human. According to the man, the outside world is still in shambles, with tribes battling for what is left. He also mentions that the virus still exists, and that some people believe the hybrid created it. As Gus grows closer and closer to revealing himself, Puba becomes concerned that the man will notice Gus. Puba then uses his broom gun to try to scare the man away. Puba's worries are well-founded when he realizes their spot has been identified for future predators. Following this, Puba instructs Gus to take refuge in a secret chamber under the stairs. Puba tells Gus to wait for him to return. Puba goes back outside to confront the man. After a moment, Gus emerges from the secret chamber to discover a deer in his yard after a while. It warms him up right away. Puba screams in the distance, and Gus turns around. 
He ultimately exits the house to see how things are. As Gus takes it all in again, the sounds of the environment become louder, but Puba appears, hurt. Gus carries Puba after collapsing. After Puba recovers, he tells Gus that his mother's name is Birdie. He goes on to say that they were separated as the world came crashing down around them. He refers to Gus as a really special boy and asks him to prepare him breakfast. Gus discovers that his father has died when he arrives home. After some time, Gus has become the man of the house. His antlers have grown, and his imagination has as well. Gus makes creatures out of sticks and communicates with them. Following that, Gus discovers an old box with a photograph of his mother with Colorado written on it. He then comes upon a pamphlet claiming to be a safe haven for hybrids. Gus pulls out a map and locates Colorado. He embarks on a new journey, but is soon ambushed by a guy with a bow and arrow. Another man approaches him from behind and grabs his antlers. They have a strange fascination with him and refer to him as special. Gus tries to flee from the man, and the two hunters are subsequently shot. Tommy Jeppard stands behind him. On the other hand, Gus is still scared, so he flees and hides. Tommy eventually enters the home where he's hiding and speaks with Gus, telling him that his antlers are worth a lot of money to a poacher. Tommy discovers Gus and is astounded that he can communicate. Tommy tells him not to light a fire during the day, since he's seen the smoke from afar. Tommy subsequently performs some renovations to Gus's house, but Gus remains skeptical. Before leaving, Tommy refers to Gus as a sweet tooth. Gus yells after him, inquiring as to where Colorado is. Tommy advises him to remain put since it's dangerous out there for individuals like him. Gus mulls this over and considers what if his father was mistaken about his mother's disappearance. He takes his mother's photo and sprints out to the fence. He rushes into the outer world, bringing the fear of exhilaration. Gus locates Tommy and asks him to take him. Following that, Amy's narrative explains what happened before the Great Crumble. Despite becoming a couples therapist, she failed to connect with others. She led a routine existence. An emergency broadcast system is deployed during one of her therapy sessions. As mayhem erupts around her, she hides herself in her office. She became a prisoner at her workplace after staying there for weeks. She eventually ventured out into the desolate metropolis. A group of elephants stampedes by her, startling her so much that she laughs. For the first time in her life, she feels alive. She has a good idea of where to go. Amy enters a bird sanctuary and adopts a fresh start. Meanwhile, Gus is determined that they travel to Colorado, and Tommy attempts to convince him that Colorado blew up. Gus realizes it was a prank and continues to pursue him with zeal. The two gradually grow to know one another, but Tommy soon tires of Gus and urges him to go home when he runs out of food. Gus indicates a visitor center at the top of a waterfall and informs him that meals will be available there. Tommy then sends Gus up to the tourist center by himself while he scopes his weapon from afar. Gus is startled when he notices a deer head on the wall, and he soon finds himself in a trap. When Rusty, a small child, sees Gus, he shouts to his father. Tommy and Gus are invited to dinner by Rusty's family. Gus informs Rusty's mother that he needs to go to Colorado to search for his mother. Rusty's parents explain to them that their son was the final normal human before the hybrids. They hesitantly allow Gus to play with Rusty. Rusty's father recognizes Tommy as he was a former football player. Tommy assures him that they're only staying for one night and that they're not looking for trouble. Hunters prowl outside as Gus and Rusty have a good time inside. Gus had never heard music before, so Rusty and his mother play it for him, and he's completely enthralled by it, leaping about all over the place. Meanwhile, Dr. Aditya notices Rani's finger shaking a bit while they're playing Scrabble, which is an indication of the virus. Dr. Aditya takes a pill and injects it into her. He thinks the medicine is about to run out, so he tells her he's going to see Dr. Bell and get a refill. Eventually, Dr. Aditya mounts his horse and rides off to a secure estate that has been heavily damaged by vegetation. He enters the hospital center, which has an unsettling atmosphere. He eventually runs into Dr. Bell and requests a refill. He says that each medication lasts Rani 28 days until symptoms reappear. 
Dr. Bell requests Dr. Aditya to keep track of her virus-fighting efforts. She holds a stack of paperwork describing all of her research. Dr. Bell is dying of cancer and wants Dr. Aditya to carry on her work. Dr. Bell feels it is his fate since he would do anything for his wife. When Dr. Aditya gets home, he's upset that he has to take up Dr. Bell's duties as well as his wife's care. He doesn't think he'll be able to pull it off because it goes against everything they believe in. Rani is taken aback when she sees the paperwork. They definitely disagree with Dr. Bell's approach. Late at night, as Rusty's mother understands who he is, she asks Tommy how many people he's killed. Tommy tells her that he is no longer that guy and that he accomplished what he needed to do to live. Rusty's mother says that Gus thinks he'll look after him and wonders why he saved him. Tommy wants Rusty's mother to look after Gus since she'll be the closest thing he has to a mother that he'll ever have. After that, Rusty's mother contemplates bringing Gus in. After witnessing her kid play with him, she senses growth in her family. After this, Gus becomes concerned when he sees Tommy leave in the middle of the night. Outside the house, though, hunters are encircling the area. Tommy looks terrified as he counts down how many shots he has left. The main hunter awakens the family, who informs them that they have the right to enter the home and requests that they surrender Gus since they suspect he's a hybrid. Tommy demonstrates his combat prowess by dispatching the hunters one by one, leaving a trail of dead men in his wake. However, one of the men enters the house as the rest hide. Eventually, Gus then attempts to hit the man with his slingshot, which has no effect. Then Gus lunges at him and injures him with his antlers. Gus takes a position across from the man who's oblivious to a large deer behind him. Tommy then murders the man by sneaking up behind him. The following day, Rusty's father informs Tommy the next day that his family comes first and that Gus cannot stay with them since Gus brings too much attention. Gus and Rusty bid farewell to one another. After assisting Tommy and Gus on a cable car, the family departs for good. Gus informs Tommy that he'll go on his own in search of his mother. Tommy assures him that he'll assist him in getting to the next town, but they'll be finished with each other after that. The episode ends with Amy, who remains at the sanctuary, content with her existence until she hears something outside. Amy tentatively wanders down the road with a gun when she comes upon a container with a newborn hybrid inside. Oink oink. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.